Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. I want to thank you for supporting me, and I want to thank you for the growth of my channel. It's amazing to me. I'm absolutely blown away. I have several items for the, for the news today. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first one is AstraZeneca is withdrawing its vaccine globally after admitting it can cause potentially deadly blood clots. I don't think I need to read anything about this article. You can just read it yourself. The headline is pretty self-explanatory. The second thing that I have is, is journalism back? New York Times editor goes ballistic on Biden, safe space era. When I read this, I thought, uh, wait a minute. In a rare, uplifting press story, New York Times executive editor Joe Kahn seemed to lose patience with the incessant demands that he elect Joe Biden instead of reporting news, directing an epic and justice for all style, no, you're out of order, tirade against the White House and its lackeys. There are people out there in the world who may decide, based on their democratic rights, to elect Donald Trump as president, Khan told Smith. It is not the job of the news media to prevent that from happening. It's the job of Biden and the people around Biden to prevent that from happening. <laughs> uh, well... You need to tell the news media that, including your own paper. Finally, in a sweeping indictment of Trump-era journalism, Khan pointed a finger at a generation of reporters who appeared to arrive in newsrooms unequipped to deal with unpleasant facts. Sounding offended on behalf of the paper's reporting reputation, which took a beating with years of misses on stories like Ru Russiagate, and factual fiascos like the Caliphate podcast, Khan reminded Times reporters that the job is about facing and reporting difficult truths, not striving to remake reality into a campus-like safe space in pursuit of any political mission. <laughs> um, okay, well... I'm not as sanguine about this uh, supposed change of heart as Matt Taibbi seems to be. Um, if you know anything at all about the Times, you know that they've been reporting lies for a long, long time. For example, they uh, won a Pulitzer Prize for the reporting on Russia that it was just a, a utopia <laughs> where they killed 20 million of their citizens. But it was a utopia, according to the New York Times. And they won a Pulitzer Prize for their work on that. So I'm not holding my breath waiting for the Times to, to suddenly speak truth. <laughs> and I don't think you should either. Uh, it's an interesting story, but I think Taibbi makes more of it than what it is. The third thing I have, so I'm not going to put it up on the screen, but it's a Tucker Carlson encounter with Tara Reid. Tara Reid, I, I did not know this. Apparently Tara Reid claims to have been sexually assaulted by Joe Biden when he was a senator. I was completely unaware of this. But uh, the harassment against her has been so bad that she has had to leave the country and she is now in Russia trying to be somewhere where they can't get to her anymore. So I'll put that link in the description along with the others and you can follow up on it if you so desire. The next article is Colleges Side with Radicals, Their Students Be Damned. And this article brings out some interesting stats or facts about what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, the left and their media allies want you to believe that protests roiling college campuses are a spontaneous uprisings of morally fervent students worried about Gaza war victims. Don't fall for that claim. It's a scam. These protesters don't represent most students on, or the American public. Here are the facts. A minuscule 2% of people ages 18 to 29 polled by Harvard's Kennedy School named the Israel-Hamas conflict as their top political concern, compared with double digits who were concerned about the economy. Students couldn't care less about this issue. Claims that today's campus riots are reminiscent of 1968 when students closed down campuses to protest the Vietnam War are nonsense. Back then, Gallup found 46% of respondents in that age group considered the Vietnam War the nation's biggest problem, not 2%. Organized outside groups are behind much of the campus violence. Hours before the storming of Columbia's Hamilton Hall, an outside organization called the People's Forum, known for its anti-Israel activities and links to the Chinese Communist Party, started gearing up for its Hamilton Hall invasion. In a meeting, TPF's leaders spewed invectives against Columbia. And now Columbia has canceled their finals. So <laughs> they're really serving their students, aren't they? I, I have noticed, and I've mentioned this before in my uh, daily news clips, that uh, <clears throat> the the uh, similarities between these protests and the ones that we saw in the 60s. But the parallels that I drew were not to the students protesting, they were to all of the communist activists who were behind the protests and stirred them up and got them going. Now it's true that a larger percentage of the students were against the Vietnam War, but that's because they had a draft and they didn't want to get drafted. As soon as the draft disappeared, the student protests disappeared with them. They just vaporized. So that should tell you all you need to know about that. This last article I found really disgusting. Democrats demand global crackdown on human rights, including mine, to save democracy. This is Michael Schellenberger reporting. And he was uh, testifying before Congress, and he was expecting Congress to be upset about what's going on in Brazil, where they are censoring and throwing political opponents in jail and just doing everything you're not supposed to do in a free, free democracy. But no, the Democrats support Brazil. They like the idea of shutting down all the opposition. So, <laughs> what a surprise, huh? That's what I have for news tip for today. I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy, that you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. I pray most of all, that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.